In the latest episode of Single Drunk Female, Sam tries to rush through the 12-step program, and as she does this, her mother Carol tries to keep hidden what her daughter's going through from her book club. For our first topic, we're going to go on to Sam trying to rush through the process, and one of the things that makes this a problem is that Olivia, who's you know, Sam's sponsor, she feels like she's not ready to go to the process of making amends with people. Mainly because she doesn't think that Sam fully understands everything that she's gone through and is really ready to take accountability for her actions. Never mind, one of the things that really is worrying Olivia is that Sam is still going into areas and dealing with people who are triggering and could possibly make her relapse. Be it going to bars with Felicia and having a good time there, whether it's her still wanting to talk to Britt despite all that Britt brings up when it comes to what happened between them. All of this is very worrisome for Olivia, but on the flip side, the way Olivia portrays her life of going to do things with her wife, simple things with some friends and all that, that's very much, for lack of a better way of putting it, middle agey. It doesn't really appeal to Sam, so the question is right now is, she knows what she liked to do as a person who was far from sober, so what kind of life can she form for herself now as a sober person? Never mind with the kind of people that she has around her who seem to like to go to bars and party. So the second top is a bit of a two-part and is pretty much just showing that Sam isn't ready to make amends and do all that. Alongside Carol, probably not ready to fully deal with how much she might be part of why Sam is an alcoholic. So, just to get Carol out the way, she has her book club at her house and it's considered a major deal for her. But one of the many issues that happen during that book club is one, Gail, who is the probation or parole officer, I forget which one, and there apparently is a difference. She shows up at the door to do a verification, a dress check, and unfortunately for Carol, Bob decides, you know what, let's invite her in. And with him doing that, she gets to talking and Carol's cover is blown. But rather than be full on embarrassed and kind of shrink a bit, she decides to kind of have a little blow up, destroy a few things, and she apparently feels better. Maybe not in a way that it's going to change anything, but at least in that moment, she has a nice little release. Switching over to Sam. Unfortunately for Sam, she wants to be better so badly that she is willing to fake it and hope that she'll eventually make it. The problem is, is it doesn't work for the situation. She uses Felicia, who thinks that, you know, Sam wants to have a change of pace instead of them going to the bar all the time. And Felicia even brings her son, Zach, who is apparently Sam's godson, and they all are supposed to go on the roller rink and have a little good time. Unfortunately, Felicia, she learns that she was just being used and Sam really just needed a ride in order to talk to Britt, who is celebrating a special occasion, her birthday, and unfortunately, Sam pretty much ruins it. To go into a little bit of detail, the way that Britt kind of shows herself to us is that she works a lot. She's doing something in the medical field. I don't know if she's a doctor in training, I'm a, a mortician in training, what exactly, but her time is precious and she does not get a whole lot of time to spend with either her fiance or her friends, never mind her family. So Sam trying to pull her to the side to give a half-ass apology where she takes some accountability, but at the same time she wants to know, you know, the only reason why son things happen is because of something that you did. It doesn't lead to the results that Sam was hoping for, and it really just pisses Britt off even more. But the kicker is here, once Felicia learns that she was being used, she decides to abandon Sam, and this means that Joel and Britt have to drive Sam home in a very awkward, quiet car ride. But when it comes to Sam, she's lucky that while it may take a very long time for her to reconcile with Britt, when it comes to Felicia, Easy peasy. For one of the things that it seems to be the problem with Felicia, though of course we're just starting to really get to know her so it's hard to say if this is the definitive answer, but I would at least say that 
because Felicia has a child now, who, by the way, is not like a little two to three year old. It's a kid who's definitely at least in elementary or even middle school. But because she has a kid, it seems that whatever friend she had when she used to be a more hard partier, they might have went to the wayside. So now Sam may actually be one of the only people in her life who are like trying to hang out and everything. And when it comes to Felicia, as she tells Sam, is she necessarily always trying to go to good time Sally's or go to drink and do all that type of kind of, you know, crazy stuff? Not at all. Felicia straight up wouldn't mind having a nice, like, hangout out around the house, bra off, watching a movie, TV show, with or without Zach. And I think that's one of the things that she would love to do with Sam, but, you know, Sam is still stuck in a cycle of going out means going to a bar, and, you know, it's not something that Felicia is against because, you know, any time away from Zach is always good time. I mean, don't get us wrong, she loves her son, but as any parent will tell you, you know, a break is a break. And even if I got to pay a little bit for it, hey. <laughs> but anyway, once Sam acknowledges her part in using Felicia and, you know, wanting to do better, it seems that those two chill out and even become a bit closer. But the first highlight is just Felicia being developed as a character. On one hand, you have to appreciate Felicia being a lot of what Carol has refused to be thus far in terms of being a support system to Sam. Yet in another way, you can definitely say that she allowed herself to be used and used by Sam and also become an enabler. But thankfully in this episode, as it established who Zack is in terms of actually getting to see him and see him interact with his mom, and also Felicia calling out Sam for not really showing much, much in a way of reciprocity, their evolution now, their evolution, their friendship has now been forced to evolve, as well as how the writers approach when it comes to Felicia. Because as uncouth as Felicia may seem, now you are forced to see her as a real person. Now you're forced to see that as much as she loves Sam, she also similar to Carol in a way, cannot deal with the former Sam who would use people and then think she can just get away with it because of, I don't know, maybe because her dad died or whatever she used to do. Now Sam is forced to really understand what Olivia was talking about in terms of making amends and recognizing, also as Olivia said, some bridges just can't be rebuilt. Britt may never come back into Sam's life in any type of meaningful way, but Felicia is willing to at least try. And I don't know if she's willing to try because she doesn't have other friends because of her history with Sam or what, but it was a beautiful thing to see, especially when you compare, of course, Carol to Felicia, what it means to have a person who really wants to support you and celebrate when you get your 30 day chip and stuff like that, compared to somebody who doesn't really want to understand your situation. and. And while Carol tries to not really verbalize too much how burdensome, how burdensome it is on her without making it so that she can be seen as the bad guy, you can definitely tell those little jabs are probably why her and Sam has, have not had a good relationship for who knows how long. The next highlight is Olivia, and I think the main reason we like Olivia is, as being someone who's a fan of the bow type, Olivia reminds us of what Jacqueline and also Oliver were, except definitely us seeing less of the rose-colored glasses version of the character. With us knowing that she had alcoholism, that she burned a lot of bridges, and now she kind of had to dull her life in order to have one that could be at least stable, it feels like we get to have that flawed version of that mentor, or in this case, a flawed version of a sponsor who as somebody who knows people who have alcohol issues and also have gone to NA, you cannot underestimate the power of having a good sponsor. And while I don't personally have any of those issues, I can definitely see that Olivia could be that vicarious sponsor or at least set that precedent for what you should look for and what kind of person you can need when it comes to keeping on the wagon and not falling off. The next highlight is just a depiction of the challenge of staying sober. And the reason we're highlighting this is because the way Sam lives is pretty much the same as she did when she was drinking, but now without the drinking, she's forced to realize how much of, 
out how much alcohol played a role in her actually having fun. Going to a bar, dancing, doing karaoke is not as fun when you're not drinking. And even though we see her do karaoke at the end of the episode, it seemed more so to help heal her relationship with Felicia than it was about her trying to adapt to this non-alcoholic life. And one of the next things that I think the show's going to look into and possibly challenge Sam with is finding what else is she interested in without drinking being a part of it. Because it seemed that once Sam found out about alcohol, or should I say was able to buy on alcohol, she fixated on that being part of everything in order to make it fun. So when it comes to bowling, when it comes to roller skating, stuff like that, or even a book club since she wants to be a writer, there is the question if Sam can adapt to that kind of life and not see it just as boring as going to a club without drinking. Can she obtain the life that Olivia has or some form of it where she remains sober without sort of feeling like life is meaningless without going to drinking? For it's not like Sam is having like a really hard time with sobriety to the point of her sweating and all that since apparently that might have been handled when she went to rehab but you can definitely tell as she gets more and more aggravated about not being able to drink her not her being told she shouldn't be having sex and stuff like that something's gonna have to give because there's no real means of relief right now and she's not really looking for ways that are good for her to do so the last highlight is Sam and Carol being held accountable. Now, we've spoken throughout this whole recap and review about Sam being accountable, whether it's in terms of Felicia, her changing her habits, and as well as her handling of Brit. But Carol, we haven't really gone into, and one of the things I think we really have to take note of is that during Carol's book club, there's a mention of generational curses, trauma, something of that ilk. And you can see that with that, Carol finds herself kind of introspective in a way that she doesn't feel comfortable with because it kind of pushes her to think, is it my fault that my daughter's drinking like this? But she quickly rubs that, no, not rubs that off. She quickly kind of shakes that off. And I kind of wonder between Bob, Gail, maybe even Sam, especially since Sam may go back to therapy, who knows, if that might be addressed later on. Because, as we said in a review of the first two episodes, when it comes to drinking, a lot of people are social drinkers. And when it comes to Sam, she went into becoming an addict. But what we don't really go into, at least not yet, is whether or not Sam's dad was a drinker. Whether or not, when it comes to the maternal side, it's a grandma, grandpa drinking, drink, uh, drinkers. And... It's kind of the question of, is it something that genetically Sam was disposed to? Was it because her mother would leave alcohol around that kind of opened up the doors for Sam? Did she kind of let her taste alcohol early on? Or could it just be that, like for a lot of us, you saw the habits of your parents, you followed suit, but for some of us, you didn't know how to handle the habit the way they did, so you end up an addiction, uh, uh, you end up addicted to something or else, copying your parents negative traits or habits and without having the same background as them not knowing how to kind of break out of it especially since you're dealing with it in a whole different world than they did and when it comes to Carol being accountable it's going to be interesting to see if this might be the trigger that leads to her kind of being like Felicia and wanting to make it less of a strictly Sam problem in terms of Sam having to deal with her faults and all that and make it more of a Sam and her issue so that Sam can really have that support system that she probably needs beyond just having a roof over her head in order to not only stay sober but also maybe get back to where she was if not beyond where she was when she was drinking on a regular basis. Overall, Single Drunk Female continues to show that sobriety is a long and hard process that requires a shift in your life and your relationships, as well as those who want to stand by you and accept you for who you are as they know you in the past, as well as who not only they would like you to be, but who you're capable of being in the future.